Welcome back. We continue to follow breaking news this morning. At least five people have been injured in a massive house fire in the area of Coxwell and Girard. And this is a live look at the scene here. This is in the Upper Beaches neighborhood of Toronto. At least two people are in life threatening critical condition in hospital. Two firefighters have also been injured, one transported to hospital. This fire first breaking out around 4 30 this morning and engulfing a second home. Uh, one person reportedly jumping to a neighboring house here uh, to get out. At least at this time, it is unclear if everyone is accounted for. Uh, but again, there is a, a full closure through this stretch here. And Steph will bring that to you in just a minute. But this fire far from under control. And of course, they are battling with the elements as well. So we'll continue to watch this story for you throughout the morning. Let's get to the latest now on COVID-19. Could the worst be over. Officials say Ontario could see fewer than 2,000 daily cases in February, but only if restrictions remain in place. So where do we stand and how concerned should we be about this UK variant? For more, I'm joined by Dr. Susie Hoda, who is Medical Director of Infection Prevention and Control and Infectious Disease Specialist at the University Health Network. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. So we saw the, the modeling um, and it said things are looking okay, but, but, we really should be concerned with this variant. Uh, what is your take on this hearing that this could potentially be the spread, the one that we really need to keep an eye on and the dominant strain? I think a number of things. First of all, what we're doing right now is working. And from what we've seen in other parts of the world where the different variants of, of concern are circulating, these kinds of lockdowns and stay at home orders are also still effective. So I think it's just more of a call to action that we need to keep doing what we're doing and do as good a job as possible. Um, some of the data that was reviewed yesterday showed that people are still moving around a fair amount. So the mobility data, it's better now than things were before in December, but we could still do uh, probably more to reduce our contacts with other people. Mm -hmm, indeed. So when we talk about contacts with other people, obviously the big question is the back to school because that will in fact yes. include a lot of contact with all of our little ones and big ones as well. Right now the government hasn't really released this specific threshold on what, what gets to reopen, what doesn't when you look at uh, population and case count. For you uh, as, as a medical professional, what should the threshold be when we look at being able to reopen some schools? It's all about balance in the end, and I'm not sure what the magic number is myself. I think um, there's a growing understanding that, you know, having children at home and trying to do virtual learning is not successful for many kids. And having school open again has many benefits um, to the health of the children, to, to, you know, their educational needs, et cetera. So I think the priority here is to try and safely get schools open again. And even if we have some ongoing transmission, as we will in the upcoming months of COVID-19, as long as all the measures for infection control and infection prevention are optimized, which means great screening and detection, probably adding a layer of, of more testing and detection in areas where the risk is higher, um, making sure masking is optimized as much as possible. You know, whatever can be done with distancing is, is being done with children, which is challenging in some settings. And what's the ventilation of these settings like? And what can we do to make that better? You know, these are the kinds of things that I think we should be really looking at as best as possible to get under control so we can get our kids back into school. Yeah, I think some would argue that, that they wish some of that had already been in place prior to schools opening up in September. But here we are today. I want to get your take on this mask debate. A lot of countries are looking at the idea of the double masking or looking at the triple layer masking and, and that these cloth masks aren't necessarily doing their job. As, as an infectious disease expert, your thoughts on when it, what we should be doing here and whether or not that's working. This is a really tough one. So, uh, you know, on one hand, I can understand how if you're adding layers of fabric onto, you know, what you have for your respiratory protection, you're probably going to improve on the barrier protection that you have. So, you know, protecting people around you from your own secretions and, and droplets and, you know, probably also improves the filtration of the air that you're also taking in. But that said, I, you know, the idea of putting two masks together, one on top of the other, uh, even though some argue that it improves on fit, I think it actually is going to lead to more, you know, fussing around and touching the mask. People might be more uncomfortable, and I worry that that's actually going to decrease overall mask uptake. So I think these things have to be thought about very carefully. And so far, I haven't seen any recommendations in Canada for us to be double masking with cloth masks or, or medical masks. I think we have to wait for our public health officials to tell mm -hmm. us what is the right thing to do. And for now, just follow what those recommendations that are already posted on Public Health Agency Canada say. Okay, we will continue to follow these developments. Dr. Hoda, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. You're welcome.
And with this conversation, of course, we're talking about vaccines. And another new vaccine is showing some promising results after undergoing phase three clinical trials in the UK. So coming up next, we have details on the Novavax vaccine. We'll tell you how effective it was and if it can protect against that contagious UK variant. That's coming up. 